So, what's this? You like my ride? Yeah, it's a nice Datsun. Nissan. Datsun. Nissan. Expensive Datsun. <laughs> Infinity QX60 for 2022. This has the 3.5 liter V6 naturally aspirated engine. It produces 297 horsepower. And you have to tell me how much torque it does. Let me tell you how much this car costs, because I'm sure you don't remember. Yes, I do. It tell is 64995 as equipped. This is... This trim, okay? This trim itself. I forgot the, the name sensory, of it. Sensory all-wheel drive. I was going to call it the Sensate, but sure, yes. A sensory all-wheel drive, standard. Sensate all-wheel drive. Should we just call it the Johnny Lawrence instead of Sensei? The Johnny Lawrence. Let's make it cool. Let's make it badass. Because it has no hope of being badass. This so is not a badass car oh, like Johnny. So nice. Come on. So prices for the redesigned 2022 QX60 start at $54,995. Note in Canada, they're all all-wheel drive. In the States, you can get them front-wheel drive. But here, all of them, standard intelligent all-wheel drive. The top of the line is the Autograph model. It costs 67995 And why did they have to call it Autograph? Are they like jealous of Range Rover with the autobiography? Maybe it has to autograph. do with the, the quill dash that they kind of... I don't know, I but don't know. I wouldn't want an autograph from a Datsun. Not cool enough. You're going to go back to that rap song? It's like, you just want to go back to his Datsun or Watson? No? Help. One day, <laughs> you're going to be cool. Okay, listen, so it looks really nice, all right? Like, it's actually a really sleek looking car, all right? LED headlights in the front are nice and sharp, very well defined and elegant. Same with the rear. It's got like a, not a strip, but it's very nicely defined rear end. You know what? I actually do like the car. I like the grill. I like the chrome stuff on the front. I like the chrome stuff on the side. The That's infinity, what I was going to say. The em embroidered, embedded, whatever you want to call it. That's the thing that stands embosed. out with me. Embosed. Embosed, yes. And the chrome, right? Mm. It says infinity and chrome. So it actually gives you that feeling of status. Like you walk up to the car and you see this nice chrome plated infinity luxury. I have two objections though regarding the looks. The first, that chrome thing on the sides of the bumpers that looks like an exhaust pipe. On the sides, you mean... Such the, a fail. The bottom sides of the yeah. edges. Well, it's not even exhaust, so I don't even know the purpose of that. That's put Such there, but... Such a freaking fail. I don't know. I don't prefer when I see that. That's something I'd rather avoid and just have a bumper if you're going to do it. What's the point? And here's the second thing. It has 20-inch wheels yeah. that are 20 by 8, but I noticed that it's on a 255 tire. Yeah. That's a very wide tire for an 8-inch rim. It should have been at least a 9 or a 9.5 for a 255. So, I don't know. It, it looks like it's a little bit bulged out. So It's okay. It's winter. You're not supposed to drive fast. You're okay, supposed to but drive safe. 8 inch on a 255 tire? It seems a little bit narrow. Who cares? Inside? I gotta give nice. some credit on the materials they use everywhere. And Infinity, it's built I've well. owned a 07 G35, right? The 6MT. And... This is strikingly familiar going from that old of a car to this style of no, it's SUV. it's not. From if there. I hide the emblem here of Infinity, the two cars have nothing to do with each other. No, they don't. But the it's it's the ambiance of the Infinity style, right? It totally reminds me of it, and they kept it consistent, but they keep stepping it up a notch. I love it, like the stitching, the two color stitching. The wood grain trim. So it has nice a linked aluminum feel. Look. Like it, it's like hard underneath, but it has like a little cushiony yeah, leather. Yeah, it's thing. nice. And then leather soft, right? And this is all soft to the touch everywhere here. And But this wood grain, know. like I almost didn't notice it's a wood grain. The well, panel a, black kind of, I don't so, know. So the panel black, check. The wood grain, I don't know. I get, I See, hope. See, does it rattle or is it built properly? No, no, not that's like good. A Mercedes. I, I tried. No, it's not a Mercedes, definitely, but. If there's an option for a different wood trim, shh, shh, shh. what? If you're trying to fart, look at this. There's an air cleaner. See, it says clean. Yeah, that's the that takes care of your farts, so we're good. Yeah, well, you're the one making side shifts. So it's not only pretty good looking in here and well built. I have kinda enough good space. I mean, my knee hits the dash a little bit here. You don't have that problem, I see, but. No, it's a little wider here, but it's okay. it's okay, depending on how you adjust the seat. But these zero-G seats are actually pretty comfortable. 
but they're not as comfortable as some of the other I seats. I find the leg support is a bit short. Other yeah. than that, I'm okay with it. Yeah, um, I, I like it when it goes further down towards the bottom of my knee here, but... Uh, roominess in the second row is also pretty good. You can slide the seats back and forth, which is awesome. You can press one button on the side, I see here, and the seat will fold forwards, but in a, keep retaining the shape for like a baby seat, which is cool. The axis is pretty easy, like the opening to the third row is pretty, you know, pretty wide. I climbed up there, and yes, I kind of could sit in the third row. I was really squished. I had to push the middle row forward, and then I was very comfortable. But then the guy in the middle was really upset, had no leg room. So you kind of have to slide it back and forth and figure out like a, some middle grounds. You do have rear climate control as well. And USB ports, and the middle row is heated, which is pretty cool. That's right. So the trunk with all seats up is 411 liters, and it has this pretty cool compartment underneath for some extra storage. If you fold the third row down, which you have to do manually, but at least you have buttons on the side that will electronically pull them back up, the cargo capacity increases to 1,178 liters, which is pretty freaking awesome. The first thing I noticed when I got in, screen, screen, nice forced feedback, uh, the adjustable components in the dash. Now, forced feedback? Yeah, like you touch it, go bzz. Oh, haptic feedback. Whatever. Forced, forced feedback, feedback is the Logitech thing. On the okay, whatever. PC. Haptic, forced, whatever. Like I push okay. it and I feel something. Okay. Right? But it, the only thing I, I don't like is fingerprints. how... fingerprints. Yeah, it's... Mm. Especially with your oily hands. You mean with this how, finger too? How's the infotainment system? Is it good? Uh, it works. Works well. Uh, the one thing I, I've i seen is that it works great as you have wireless charging, your wireless Apple car, la 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 la. Okay, so you have a wireless charger and wireless CarPlay. You do, yes. Awesome. Does and it, it work comes, well? It works great. Because earlier those, when I called you, I couldn't hear you. I haven't had any issues driving it and being able to talk on the phone. Okay. Instrument cluster? Everything's electronic. You can go through the menu and fart around. So you can adjust all of your... Uh, steering assist, you can see information about your all-wheel drive, it tells you about your fuel economy, it's got everything all in one spot there. Nice and clear graphics. Yep, Not very bad. sharp. Okay, so overall pretty okay for the category. Yep. I hear rumors that this button over here makes the seat give you a massage. Yes. And you can even adjust the kind of massage as well. Really? Yep. Does nice. it have like a happy ending <laughs> <laughs> so what uh what makes us move here what's under the hood very good question jason i'm glad you asked because you're welcome under the hood is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated six cylinder uh it produces 297 horsepower and hold on i'm gonna tell you the torque right. as usual and 270 <laughs> pound feet of torque nine speed automatic transmission not cvt which awesome. is a very good thing you don't get the whininess, which is fantastic. All right, let's uh, test the zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Move over. Pedal to the metal, zero to 100 kilometers an hour comes in 7.9 seconds. That's not too bad. That's okay. It's not fat. And the brakes, the brakes feel good. It has uh, dual piston front calipers. It is a floating caliper. Uh, it stopped from 100 kilometers an hour in 43 meters. It's on winter, winter tires. tires, which is not bad at all. And just for the record, the front rotors are 350 millimeters and the rears are 330. So pretty decent brake system on this car. Rum! Does it, it makes a like pretty decent sound. It's a V6. It's a, a Nissan V6. Nissan. Nissan V6 never lets you down. But this one has a better motor than the Pathfinder, which this car is obviously related to. So this one runs on premium fuel, which you're gonna tell us how much of it it needs. And it also makes uh, a little bit more power and more torque than the Pathfinder. So what's the fuel economy now? Because with gas prices, the way they're going, it's uh, really important now. It's decent. It's 12 and a half liters per 100 kilometers. That's pretty And that's a mix of highway and city, yeah. I live right in the city, so it's not too bad. Um, it's very drivable daily and it won't, well, I was gonna say it won't kill your pocket, but. Who knows how much you drive though, but yeah. It's, it's for the size and weight and power, it's reasonable. Totally. So I've noticed that as we're driving around, it's not uncomfortable, but it's not the most comfortable ride on the planet. It's Listen, somewhere in between. Japanese cars are about balance, Daniel-san. 
balance. Though. Balance. Okay. Yeah. You can't have performance without sacrificing just a little bit of comfort. And that's what it is. It but, does sacrifice a bit of comfort. So before you sell me on that, can you take that upcoming turn at a little bit, you know, not too fast, don't kill us, but prove to me that it handles well enough that, you know. Like this? I should be feeling freaking bumps. Ooh, I felt the back kind of try to swing out. That's pretty cool. It's pretty sneaky. Okay, so it's, comfort is good, but it's not exceptional because does it handle really well? It handles great. It's really precise and crisp. Precise and crisp. Yes. I like that. Yes. So, do you think compared to like an MDX with a super handling all-wheel drive, this is at least the same good or better? Or I mean, I ha I've driven it a little bit. I can tell you right away that it's much better than a Lexus, like for sure, hands down. Um, I don't know. Compared I think to it's Acura, preference. I, I think it really comes down to preference, right? This is the type of car I prefer to drive. Um, I like it better. It doesn't feel very sporty, though. It, it kind of sets up the mood for a nice, uh, cozy ride, though. Well, so, the seats aren't exactly hugging you, right? I mean, there's the, the zero-g zero seats gravity. are... Yeah. Yeah, they're for comfort, right? And they feel really nice, too. It, it is comfortable. So, handling, very oh. good. Um, a little bit playful at the limit, as we noticed when you took that turn. Yep. Steering feels great. Brake pedal feels great. So, overall, I think it's a pretty nice drive. It's not as aggressive as the germans like i don't think it competes against like an x3 or it doesn't matter it looks aggressive so that's yeah. fine now where this one really one-ups everybody else in the segment is, is value for dollar no towing towing this can tow six thousand pounds and how do i know i saw the tow hook in the back and i'm like "Ooh, this is interesting so you mr smarty pants read the manual yes like i, I should have i always do so 6,000 pounds, that's, first of all, the same as the Pathfinder, I think. But second, 6,000 pounds, I can tow my race car in this. It's like a really good towing capacity. You could. Kudos to Infinity for doing that. I mean, usually the luxury premium brands kind of ignore towing. They're like, yeah, you're not going to tow anything. Is that but... enough for a boat? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Tow. tow your boat. So it's uh, really good. And the distance, so the ground clearance is 170 millimeters. So it's more than adequate for some, let's say, muddy last minute trails or something, but not severe off-road, but, you know, taking it, let's say, to the seaside or lakeside or whatever, loading dock, it's no problem. So good stuff. So overall, what do we think about this, Steve? What's your, um, what's your score for this Datsun, uh, I'm sorry, Infinity? I give it a solid eight and a half. Even for the price, I think it's very expensive. That's why I gave it an eight and a half. Otherwise, I would have given it closer to like, a nine. I like it, but there's two drawbacks. First, the motor is kind of archaic now. It's too old. They need like a smaller two liter turbo for kind of these kind of cars now. Gas is becoming really important, maybe even mild hybrid stuff. Um, so I'd like to see these V6s go away. We all love them, but you know, the times are shifting. We need something more fuel efficient. Just for the record, I don't want to see the V6 go away. The other thing is, yes, it does have a lot of equipment. It's very rich. It looks very nice. But again, 67000 or 65, 66 for this, plus taxes, you're over 70000 I don't know. I, I kind of feel that my money would be better spent like on a Mercedes or BMW or something German. But that's just me. I mean, I'm willing to pay preference. for the maintenance. <laughs> These guys, uh, yeah. I mean, if you're a Lexus or an Infiniti like kind of guy, yeah. I really like it. I think it's worth it for what you're paying. It is a little bit overpriced, but you know what? For what you're getting and the size of that it is, I don't know. I think it's worth it. Tell me one thing. What? I see here Bose Performance Series. How's the sound system? Meh. Just meh? It sounds good. But at this level, in this price range, they should be better. I mean, I've had to crank the treble in the bass for me to get the quality of audio that... I typically would get from an automobile in this category, like you okay. compare it to like a Harman Kardon or, you gotcha. know. All right, so cool. Thanks for uh, taking me for a ride today. Bye everyone. See you later. Take care. Have a nice day.
perfect. <laughs>